All right, here we go. Season three, the Ricky Gervais show. Um, by the way, I made a compilation of the best moments from season two. If you haven't already, please check that out. And you know, I realized something while I was making that video. I think season two is actually superior to season one. Um, I think it's because in season one, the, the focus, there was a lot of focus on the diary. It was so fresh. Like that, that was the main focus to me in, uh, in season one was the diary. And in season two, we stopped with the uh, monkey news. And I think that's better actually, because it gives them space to talk about different topics. Monkey News used to take a, a lot of space from the episodes in the first season. So I think season two is actually better. Anyway, here we go with season three. Episode one of season three. Brian's Brain. Lego. <laughs> For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. This is the worst chair I've ever <laughs> sat on. And I've sat on some fucking chairs in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, are we started? One, one. Are we ready? Are we recorded? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Hello and welcome to a brand new series. <laughs> what? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I was getting it. I was getting it all you fired get up. Excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. It just seems a bit loud. That. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? <laughs> Well, come back here, then, you dopey bald twat. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right. Okay. Ready. So it was your problem. Oh Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right. Ready. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to say hello. Okay. Right. Okay. Hello, and welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> While I was at my parents' house, they they often uh, you know they keep clippings of things you know if if we've been mentioned in the papers. I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. In the Sunday Times, they uh, someone's written a letter about Carl. Wow. Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent. And this is what they, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times. Who is Carl Pilkington, <laughs> and why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? He asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. You know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> but think how angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, though. you really must have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah. If I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listen to this. But, <laughs> Almost certainly not. But listen, right? I was saying about the the uh, museums, right, and how they're big and everything, and they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. that in the, in that museum, they've got something like. Uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits. Because there was a fella, a fella who opened it, right? I did a bit of research on the museum. What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah. yeah. So he's in there and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? 
just whatever's knocking about that oh, time. Okay. It, just, it seemed like you ever searched it. He never chucked anything away. He's <laughs> like, oh, I won't put it in the bin. Pop it on the shelf. Okay, right? so yeah. So put everything on a shelf oh, in the right, museum. Yeah. Then as time. Oh, went I think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, he keeps everything, and if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing. The good stuff. Well, people who set these museums up are just as crafty. <laughs> what? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But She's hang on, wait, no, but we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me, I didn't nick But anything. she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's not nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, all right, then we'll, we'll watch Wendy's little programme when that goes out. Let's <laughs> see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. This is why Wendy's having a go, though, because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who'd have thought the Frisbee would have caught on? I love <laughs> the fact that you think the Frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where, you, you know, you said, I've invented this, did go get out... They wouldn't, have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about, what, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? No, I don't like it. How okay, many and that was them? an argument with himself. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the Frisbee, and that's saying yeah. something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a does clippable that clippable mat that like you stick on a cup so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time. And you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have no, to be haven't... clipped to no, it? Why couldn't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh So it clips onto... You've got our special cups. It doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce. It doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that. I mean, I don't use sauces. Just don't buy that sort of But isn't of furniture. a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh, kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no-one's picked up on his ideas, Ooh. like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, what's the one about the tie? Um, the tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that. That's something I, I saw somewhere. It never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good... It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a idea. carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie packed with stuff. You want to... Imagine All right, stuff. Frank, nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um, <laughs> this ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um... Well, I'll tell you. What? Uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Mm. Well, all right, then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. <laughs> now, yeah. I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, that's weird. What you all right, I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but... but... Hang on, hang on a minute, it's a hot day, isn't it? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. Well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing on. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice it, give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. A tie, at the moment, is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something. Hands free. And everything's always there. A bag, put stuff in a bag, you put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags, that's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off. Oh, where's the bag? A tie, when you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. <laughs> Carl! The country would look smarter. Oh right, you have pockets, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got spare change. Yeah, OK. Which, uh You're rattling around like a like a cow in Switzerland, just <laughs> like... I've got spare change, I've got, uh like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh Maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. OK. A uh, pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's <laughs> safe, isn't it? Oh, that's a good place to put it, just in the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and then near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. 
So when you when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, pop a tie on, go to the shop, do pop a tie. On. <laughs> well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times. But I'm just saying, if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, you've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If I mean, come on, John. Don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> 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 Carl said the, uh, the most exciting words. He said, I've had another film idea. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Does it star Clive Warren? <laughs> Sell it to me like you, I'm a Hollywood executive. <laughs> Sell me the film. So what I was thinking is, um, I'm picturing probably, it doesn't matter, it's not as fixed, it doesn't have to be this person, but I'm thinking Tom Cruise. OK, Cruisey, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and the way it works is... Do you know Tom, by the way, or have you got an in there, or...? No. no OK, okay. but you just... No, I, you, I think it's the sort of film that, would that appeal he'd, to Tom. he'd sort of be into. I think it okay. would excite him. OK, great, OK. Great. Um, so... Have you, have you ordered coffees? Did, did um... What? Did Cheryl get you a coffee? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> so, Are you hungry at all? Do you want to...? <laughs> no. No? Great. So, uh, Cheryl, I might have a tea, actually. Cheryl, if you could... <laughs> well, we'll wait for the teas before she comes in. She'll, she'll just sneak in. Flowing. She'll be... She will be very quiet. She'll be like a doormat. She won't even know she's coming. Okay. You just... <laughs> you've got your coffee. Okay. I don't want your tea. You don't want anything. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. Thanks. Go. Uh, actually, uh, I won't have a tea, actually. <laughs> Cheryl? Two teas, Cheryl. Thanks. Okay, go. Right. Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is there sugar? Sorry, is there sugar in this, Cheryl? There's sugar there. There's, there's, oh, there's, 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 no, what you're seeing on the screen is Mission Impossible 7. So if we get Cruz, he is, he is playing himself. Yeah. And he's just made and he's that... And in this film, he's just made Mission Impossible 7. It's the future, is it? This. No, what you're seeing... Is it, OK, what's this film called? I haven't got a title yet. We'll just call it Carl Pilkington Project 2. Right. OK. Mm. So you go in. The opening thing is Mission Impossible 7. You think that's yeah, yeah. I thought it was just KP2. Yeah, I'm confused. KP2. Yeah. Right, listen. So, so what happens is then it it sort of pans out. You yeah. see, it's a telly. Ah. There's a bloke watching Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible 7. Seven. Right. His girlfriend's watching it going, oh, I love Tom Cruise. Yeah. He's there going, I can't be doing with him. He's so overrated. it is set in the future, though, this, because we're assuming that he's made seven, so this is a... Yeah. How far in the future is it? Well, when will Mission Impossible 7 be made? I don't know. Probably about two years, the way it's going. <laughs> right, so, yeah, 2013. Let's not get bogged down in... A lot of these things okay. we can iron out, mm. as I say, in the script. So you see this. Mission Impossible Cheryl, 7 on the screen. Cheryl, are any of those biscuits <laughs> still knocking around? Do you want to do this meeting? <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, he's a bit... He's <laughs> easily distracted. But I will have a biscuit as well, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, OK, I've been watching the film. I, it's Mission Impossible 7. It's pulled out. There's a guy in his room in his lounge His girlfriend's with his girlfriend. watching it. She's yes. loving it. She's a fan she of Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Right. right. He's a little bit niggled. He wanted to watch something else. Sure. She decided on the DVD. Mm -hmm. He sat there annoyed. I can't right. be doing with Tom Cruise. I can't believe they've made seven of these films. Right. He's a rubbish actor. I right. should be the actor. You know, ah. I've been doing acting for years. But he's not an actor. He's well, he is. Okay. But he hasn't quite made it. He's sending a lot of demos off. Right. Forget so that. he's a he's a struggling actor. Hmm. So what happens is next day they get up. Right. Yeah. She's still going on about Tom Cruise. Loves him. Drinks some sick of him. Right, she loves him. Do my biscuits garnish my tea? I left it in too long. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> it's it's just hang on, let me just think. Twat. Can I get the spoon, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you like that? Oh, it's, it's all gone. It's all soggy. Mm, oh, that's soggy. Cheryl, can we get some more of those biscuits in here, please? Do you want, do you want to wear more? Or? Yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear no, more, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, conscious we... that Colin Firth is coming in. He's won an Oscar, so... So, mm. um, what happens is he gets so annoyed with his girlfriend liking Tom Cruise. He, um he plans to kill him. So uh, he sees Tom Cruise, he kills him somehow. Now, it's some way... Right, how does he kill him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, that's right. Okay. Oh, I got So okay, right. he dies. 
in the film in Mission Impossible 7. They're doing right. that thing on the strings. Right. He cuts, he lands. Right. His body is in perfect condition. So, but how is she watching the film? the film? Yeah, did they put it out even after Tom Cruise no, died? No, no, sorry, he was filming Mission Impossible 8. So he's, okay, so... He's filming the next they, one. They're filming the next one, the Mission Impossible 8, okay, sure. He's, he's annoyed, he's going, I can't believe they're making more of these films. Right. I can't get a gig, and yet yeah. they're churning this crap out. Yeah. So he's on his springs. On his wires, yeah. On his wires, <laughs> yeah. An accident happens. Springs happened. sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> he's bouncing around. <laughs> like a baby growth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His strings cut, smash. Hey. Tom Cruise, dead. Right. Right? Right. The bloke hears this on the radio, on the news. Yeah. The, mm. the girlfriend's fella. Mm. He hears it on the Broke news, he can't opening. believe it. He's like, yeah. Ooh. Takes his eye off the road a little bit in the celebration. Mm. <laughs> Truck. Plows into the car. Right? So he's killed as well. Well, is he? Okay. Oh, okay. Little interlude. <laughs> Fades up. Um, comes out of. You're seeing it out of his eyes. You see his eyes sort of opening. You know when you're seeing yeah, out yeah, the yeah, eyes, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, the yeah, eyelids, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see his girlfriend there, sort of looking at him like a bit, bit startled. Sure. Oh, yeah. And he's going, oh, what happened? And she's going, it's all right, it's all right. And he's going, oh, get me a mirror. She's going, I don't want to get you a mirror yet. Oh, okay. well, hold on, what's going on? You've, you've had a bad accident. What's he going to look All like? mirrors out of the room and everything. He's just learning to, yeah. learn to walk. He's going, why can't I look in a mirror? And the doctor's going, no point. Yeah. No point. point. You've got to get used to this body. <laughs> then he gets walking. It's yep. almost time to go home. Yep. His girlfriend comes in. Yep. It's her job. To tell him the, the, the new news, oh the shocking news. What's the news? Um, she says, "There's a mirror looking there." He looks in it. Yeah. He's Tom Cruise, right. right? Because he had his accident on the set. He yeah. had the accident. He ended up in the hospital. Right. Quick, quick! We've got to act quick. This is the time. This is the future. Right. Where they use, where they can use bodies, bodies yeah. all the rest of it. So Tom Cruise is dead. Tom Cruise dead. This but bloke, Brian. His body is his, his, his body's squashed, but. What's his name, Brian? Yeah. But Brian's brain is in Tom Cruise's body. Just a donor body. He just happens to... Just look... happen to... That's how yeah, it'll it's be. Just, just, it's just meat. It's just, just like, top... like a lung donor, exactly. a heart donor. Yeah. It's so, just So it's his Brian. Uh, he just looks like Tom Cruise now. He's got Tom Cruise's flesh. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Now, at first, initially, he's annoyed. Sorry, just practically, who is doing the voiceover, then, for the... It's Tom, now. So he's Tom's acting. sort of doing an impression of the, this actor... Brian. Brian's inside Tom. His yeah. name is Brian, but when you look at it on the telly, when the camera whizzes round, yeah. and you see him sat in his bed, it's Tom Cruise. Sure. Right, OK. His girlfriend's over the moon, cos she loves Tom Cruise. Right. Move. He's gutted cos he couldn't stand him, he can't stand the films. He's thinking, Yeah, oh. but he must be thinking, I look like Tom Cruise, one of the most loved actors of his generation. Yeah. Yeah. No, he he thinks so, but he's not, because he's in shock, remember? Right. He was expecting to see himself, and when he looks in the mirror, yeah, he sees no, someone else. Yeah, that must be else. shocking, yeah. So also the voice he's going, I can't stand this. And she's going, calm down, calm down, you'll get used to it. And I don't want to get used to it. And uh, she's sort of saying, look, you're alive. Right. Stop moaning. Yeah. Brian. Stop moaning, Brian. Um, she's calling him Brian, I assume. She says... And yeah. Tom Cruise just had a sort of donor card that allowed his body to be given away, did it? Yeah, it's the future. Right. It's, this, is, this is 2013, Steve. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> Clearly. Right. But What's his girlfriend's name? Claire. Claire. Claire and Brian. OK, great. Just a different body, just a slightly different look. All just right, like, so yeah. right. he's seen that he looks like Tom Cruise. He's shocked, but he's getting used to it. He doesn't look like him. He is him. When he leaves the hospital... They go, all right, Tom, I thought you were dead. They're all going, it's Tom, it's Tom. And he's going, really? Oh, yeah, and he's going, oh, I knew this would happen, it's doing me head in. So he wheels out, he's in the wheelchair. OK. He's going, I'm sick of this. Uh, the other patients are going, Tom, I thought you were dead. And he's yeah, going, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's annoyed, he gets in the car. He gets out there... Right. ..and he sees a poster up on the side of the road... Right. ..for Mission Impossible 8. It's... A, hold on, though. It's finished. I thought he died while they were filming It's not it. finished. But now, these days, he's shouting about films before the name. <laughs> and they're wow. going brilliant and all the hype well, and everything. they put a poster up even that after... Seems yeah. premature. No, the poster yeah. was already up. That they seems premature, up. given that no, a man well, died he... during the production. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'd have, no. put, I'd have taken the posters down. No, <laughs> but then I didn't work in Hollywood. <laughs> right. So the poster's up there and he sees it as he's yeah. in the car driving past. Yeah. And he thinks, that can't, that can't be finished. Doesn't make sense, yeah. They both look at each other. This is your chance. You wanted to be an actor. This is the chance. Yeah, right. Go back to the studio. So he goes in. Hello, you don't know me. And they go, oh, we think we do. And they go, no, you don't. Mm. I'm Brian. Tom right. died on your film set. Well, they Presume. must know that. They must know. 
<laughs> Tom, that Cruise Tom Cruise died. Is dead. <laughs> Because his family must have been... All right, no, if, if you want to, it makes no difference. We can tweak the script. So this is... Brian has turned up looking like Tom Cruise. He said the film company, right, who must know that Tom Cruise died on their film set. What were they going to do? Were they they would have the had to wrap it up. They would have well, had no, to what, say... You said they put the, the posters are up. <laughs> yes, the posters are up before they've even finished So they're cancelling the film until he walks Basically, in? Basically, yeah. Oh, so they are cancelling the film? They're cancelling it. Oay so, um, we're afraid, we're afraid that... that um, uh, production has stopped on Mr. Buswell uh, 8 due to the death of Tom Cruise. Hang it's on a stopped. minute. What? I'm Brian. Who the, who's Brian? <laughs> oh, my God, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. Oh, have they done that thing where they put Brian's brain in Tom Cruise's body? Yeah. Ah, oh, but it's not Tom Cruise. You can't act like him. I'm, a, you I'm an actor. Yeah, but oh, he was good because he was like one yeah, of the best actors. He's not that good. I never rated him. Yeah, but a lot of people did. And he's yeah, got a lot of people set. didn't. So right. let me bring in a new audience for you, eh? I but can bring can you... a bit to this. Right. So this, of course, gives it a boost because... Right. Um, well, the flagging see, franchise is being rejuvenated. Right. The, the yeah. press, the news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. Tom Cruise and his new film. Well, it's not Tom Cruise, they can't say that. Well, it is, though. When you look at him, you go, oh, it's Tom Cruise. Well, no, you've got to say a bloke that looks like Tom Cruise. The body of Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mission Impossible 8, starring the bones and skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's Brian. Oh, forget do you it. Like the, do, you like, do you like Tom Cruise's face but not his eating? And you'll enjoy Mission Impossible 8. Oh, Mission Impossible 8. From the people who bought you the first seven Ooh. and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven, but with Brian! It's a gun I've never heard of! I'm not the seventh sequel! No, wait, sorry, I really want to hear the ending of this story movie. Please let right. me ask questions. You've had, you had your chance to ask him questions. <gasps> Right. So where are we? In a sort of 90-minute running time of a movie, where are we now in the film? Are we about two-thirds oh, of the way through? We're close. We're close to the end. OK. Say. So yes. Mission Impossible 8 has been made. So yes. what's the end of our movie? Not of Mission Impossible 8, but the movie you're making. What's hmm. the ending there? Um, Do we ever get to see him in Mission Impossible 8? Yeah, but I think what happens is mm. um, he becomes the person who he never liked. Right. And it's it's... I just want to get across the moral that who are we? Are we the people in our body or the people we look like? Mm. What's important in life? Mm. Is it the way you look or the way you think? And he he changes because he looks like Tom Cruise. He becomes the man he never liked. Oh, and what's his girlfriend think of this? Who's? Brian's. She's loving it, isn't she? Because it's, it's, she always liked Tom Cruise. She's What did Brian look like? Who would play him in this film? Probably, Pro um, what's his name? The bloke who was in Cheers, probably. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> so Ted Danson <laughs> is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is so confusing <laughs> because Ted Danson's supposed to be someone that we've never heard of, even though he's Ted Danson, and Tom Cruise is playing himself, the famous actor Tom Cruise. <laughs> Who is now inhabited Ted by Ted Danson, who's Ted not Ted Danson. Danson. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Danson! Ted Danson as Brian. <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian, as Tom Cruise, <laughs> as Ethan Hunt in Mission for Play. <laughs> wow. Who's played Claire? <sighs> Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for you, you know, that's why I've come to you. I thought you'd know. Okay, so, Rebecca okay. De Mornay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's so hot after the love of a brain or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go where everybody knows your name is Brian. <laughs> As insane as that movie sounds, I mean, really, isn't it pretty much standard Hollywood crap? <laughs> it's like I've seen movies, I've seen at least over a thousand movies in my life, at least. And I, easily I can find, I can remember movies that, that have nonsense, ridiculous plots like these. Easy. It's what they do, actually. Anyway. <laughs>